So it was the new year, early 2022, and it was cold and warm back and forth. And it seemed like precipitation only happened on the warm days. Rain, 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 and still no real snow. But there was a small storm on the horizon, and so we were hopeful. And it was looking like the storm might line up with a northern trip we had planned to a spot on the main coast I've stayed at in years past. The folks at Seguin invited me to try out one of their tree houses that they recently winterized and added a wood-fired hot tub to. And so we worked long editing days in early January through beautiful neon sunsets to clear time in our schedule and get ready for this coastal escape. So before we head to the treehouse in Maine, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is masterworks.io, the first and only art investment platform. Masterworks offers SEC qualified shares that represent an investment in famous pieces of multi-million dollar art by people like Picasso and Basquiat. And yes, this is legitimate, and I would never tell you about something that I didn't stand behind and wouldn't use myself. So Masterworks will buy a painting, and then they will offer shares of that painting that are filed with the Security and Exchange Commission as public offerings. In 2020, they returned 32%, and in 2021, 31%. And that's why to choose art as an investment. Art has outpaced the S&P 500 from 1995 to 2021, and it really has almost no correlation with stocks. And the cool thing about Masterworks is you don't have to be rich to invest in these famous expensive paintings. Anyone can do it. There's over 300,000 people already investing with Masterworks. And if you want to take advantage and invest in some fine art, there is a wait list. But you can get priority access and start investing immediately with the link in the video description. So thanks for listening. Now let's get to the treehouse. we had our fingers crossed the storm would hit hard and turn the forest into wonderlands as we'd been patiently waiting for the full winter feeling to settle in. And so it started snowing the morning we left, but it was on and off in patches. And one section of road would have blue skies and then you'd round a bend into a blizzard. just before the light burned deep in gold and unpacked and ran around in excitement. And though there wasn't any fresh snow, the temperature forecast for the next couple days would ensure we didn't forget that it was in fact winter in New England. first order of business was to get that wood-fired cedar tub up to temperature because it can take a while and it can be hard to get it right where you want it as we'd later find out. Thank you. 
And after a glorious and long-lasting sunset, we soaked up blue hour by the bay before heading to get seafood like we always try to do when we're near the ocean. And we drove over the bridge into the nearby town to walk under the lights and get a sense for the place. Port towns like this always flood my brain with stories of what it must have been like back in the day. Bath, Maine was the nation's fifth largest seaport by the mid-19th century. And they'd built clipper ships that would sail all around the world. And I smiled as I stood under the glow Picturing the characters and the sights, smells, and sounds of these streets back during the boom. And by this time, the single-digit temperatures were becoming quite noticeable. And we looked at each other and shuddered, and confirmed this was the coldest night of the season so far. The kind of cold night that hurts your face and makes you appreciate shelter. A humble reality check for the modern human. And the only open spot was the pizza joint, with its big orange windows filled with happy warm dough eaters. And that chatter sound and wafting smell, and the whole ambiance that sucks cold walkers off the bricks and into the warm glow with relief. And though we had already planned for seafood tonight, I couldn't get this place off my mind. Oh. What are these? But nonetheless, we had an incredible dinner. And since we had been cooking a lot lately, it really hit the spot to splurge and to relax a bit after a long day of filming. And the freezing temps continued into the morning. And so I loaded the tub up extra, which I ended up learning was a mistake.
And after a good breakfast and a warm soak, we took time to relax in the morning sun and read. Something we don't dedicate enough time to in our everyday life As when you are your own boss and you're dedicated to your craft, it's hard to hit the off switch. And I've been laying on this little acupuncture mat to try and loosen up my back and to prepare for cross-country ski season. And it hurts, but after a few minutes, the burn feels good. Then we headed off on an afternoon hike at some trails just down the road. Yeah, it's safe. hurt the skin, it felt good in the lungs, and we walked for a good couple hours, observing winter on the main coast.
got back just in time for another red sunset. soaked under the moon and sipped wine and played Scrabble while we waited for our order from the pizza joint to be ready. Because life is about balance, and when you consistently work hard and dedicate yourself, it feels damn good to get away and let go for a while. <laughs> <laughs>